you. I just hope and pray that one more goes the devil's way. It's been a long road and we're going all the way. Go Rebels! Tonight, the spotlight shines on the Mile High City. CBS Sports proudly presents the 1990 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Duke University versus the University of Nevada at Las Vegas. ago, a gold rush in the Rockies drew 19,000 prospectors to this town. And tonight, there are almost that many fans packed into McNichols Arena as two teams seek to strike gold of their own. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Nance, and welcome to CBS Sports coverage of the championship game. 64 teams were invited to travel the road to the Final Four. They passed through places such as Richmond, Austin, Hartford, Oakland, and Salt Lake City. 62 games have been contested from the opening tip to the final buzzer and beyond. And tonight, two teams remain. Two schools separated by the Continental Divide, and they will soon play for this championship trophy. And to call tonight's action from courtside, it is my pleasure to introduce Brent Musburger. Brent? Jim, thank you very much. Welcome and good evening, everybody. You need a six-game winning streak once you come into this tournament to win it. And both Duke and UNLV right now have won five straight games. And tonight, one of them will win their first NCAA championship. Duke has been here eight times, yet they have not gone home with that elusive trophy. As for the running reps of Jerry Tarkanian, they've been here three times. And Billy Packer, they're still looking for their first championship. One edge we have to give Duke is that senior leadership you've told me about. Brent, it's almost incredible. Danny Ferry holds the all-time record of playing in NCAA tournament games at 19. But take a look at this ball club. Three players climbing that mountain. Ricky, Abdul Nabi, and Henderson all up there around the record. No team has ever been this experienced in a Final Four. But Billy, what about the point guard, the freshman? It's been amazing that one of their real keys is a freshman point guard who has to play in Bobby Hurley, 35 plus minutes tonight of almost errorless ball. We spoke to Coach Krzyzewski just a short time ago. Bobby Hurley is almost 100%, feels better than he did Saturday. On the other bench, Jerry Tarkanian, your evaluation of the Sharks. Well respected by all of his coaches, is one of the great teachers in the game of basketball. And when you look at his all-time record, he goes up there against the legendary Claire B, a Hall of Famer. He's only in second place among all guys that have ever coached the game of college basketball. And one of the marvelous defensive players in the history of the college game, Stacey Augman. Stacey Augman has been, without question, the best player in this year's NCAA tournament on both ends of the floor. It's going to be interesting to watch him match up tonight, particularly if it's Phil Henderson. And, Billy, we spoke to the two coaches, Krzyzewski and Tarkanian, and this is how they broke down tonight's championship matchup. Well, there are two big people inside that causes problems because we're not a real big team. You know, Butler gives us good size, but he's not very wide, and Larry Johnson's real wide, but he's not very tall. So, you know, we have a little problem there. With their perimeter pressure, they make you turn your back when you have the ball. And it's kind of like rushing a quarterback in football where you can't see all his receivers. That's what they try to do. And... Uh, they do a good job of it. We have to do the best job we possibly can on Henderson. He's a great player, and, and their two inside people are really good. Uh, the, I think they're really underrated. I think, you know, Augman will be the best player on the court. Uh, I mean, he, he can have the biggest impact on the game because he's already a great defensive player, and, and in this tournament, he's proven to be an outstanding offensive player. Billy, how do you break this one down? Well, Brent, I think the real key to the game right off the bat are the pillars of strength down in the box. Both teams very good there, but the first team that gets in foul trouble 
down in the low box with any of their players is going to lose this ball game. Hind the prime time. What I'm talking about there is what we saw Saturday. Moses Scurry off the bench playing a big game. Somebody can come off the bench tonight for either team and change the balance. That's how close it is. And re-augmentation. We use this one again Saturday. Stacy Augman has been the stopper on defense. He could do it again in this ball game. And the last thing has to do with the coaches down the aisle. They've all been here before, but they've never walked down that aisle. Somebody's under a lot of pressure. They may crack. And Billy, we're joined tonight. Jim Nance, of course, and also James Brown. JB, what have you got? All right, Brent, thank you very much. You know, for all the talk about the differences between these two ball clubs, there is one note of similarity. I talked with the players just a few moments ago, and they say on both teams that it's important tonight to win this game for their coaches as much as for themselves. The Duke players say they're a little sick and tired of hearing all the criticism of Mike Krzyzewski, who's been to a Final Four three times, but yet to win it, being criticized for being unable to win the big game. Perhaps that's the reason why Mike Krzyzewski told a friend in private, I really feel this is my year. The running Rebels, on the other hand, feel that no matter of victory tonight, it still won't diffuse the perception that they are a program of renegades. However, a national title will elevate their embattled coach, Jerry Tarkanian, to a new stature and perhaps gain him some newfound respect. So coming up, it's the national championship match between Duke and UNLV. Starting lineup coming up next on CBS. CBS Sports coverage of the 1990 NCAA Basketball Championship game is sponsored by the good time, great taste of McDonald's, AT&T, the right choice, and by Apple Computer, the power to be your best. With the sun setting behind the Rocky Mountains, we get ready for an NCAA championship. And to meet our starting lineups, let's join the PA announcer, Frank Fallon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the McNichol Sports Arena in Denver for tonight's national championship game between the Duke Blue Devils and the UN Running Rebels. For Duke at forward, a 6'5 senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, number 21, Robert Bricky. For UNLV at forward, a 6'8 junior from Pasadena, California, number 32, Stacy Augman. For Duke at forward, a 6'11 sophomore from Angola, New York, number 32, Christian Leitner. For UNLV at forward, a 6'7 junior from Dallas, Texas, number 4, Larry Johnson. For Duke at center, a 6'10 senior from Bloomfield, New Jersey, number 30, Ala Abdel Nabi. For UNLV at center, a 6'10 senior from Washington, D.C., number 00, David Butler. For Duke at guard, a 6'4 senior from University Park, Illinois, number 3, Bill Henderson. For UNLV at guard, a 6'1 and a half sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number 12, Anderson Hunt. For Duke at guard, a 6'0 freshman from Jersey City, New Jersey, number 11, Bobby Hurley. For UNLV at guard, a 6'2 junior from Las Vegas, Nevada, number 50, Greg Anthony. And introducing the head coaches, for Duke in his 10th season, Mike Krzyzewski. For UNLV in his 17th season, Jerry Tarkanian. And the Sharks' favorite towel a short time ago was prepared for this championship game. Both Tarkanian and Krzyzewski looking for their first title. for the championship game and our officials tonight are Eddie Hightower, Tim Higgins, and Richie Ballesteros. The standby is Larry Rose seated across the way. UNLV, the number one seed out of the West, they'll wear their home white. Al Abdelnavi will jump it off against David Butler and we begin. Henderson with a three to start the game and Ottman yanks away the first rebound. Match up in the post is Leitner Johnson, Aldo Nabi against Butler. Anderson Hunt. And Hurley stretches the defense on him. And Leitner steals it from Johnson. I think Johnson's going to have a hard time turning and facing on Leitner with that additional size. Seems a little shaky. Hurley almost lost his dribble. Then they batted away from Aldo Nabi by Johnson and saved beautifully by Hunt. And Vegas brings it down. No score yet. 
And now there is. Big factor for Jerry Tarkanian if his guards Hunt and Anthony can hit from the outside. Now Hunt comes out high on Hurley. Leitner to screen. Half court offense. Duke not looking to run. And Augman's on Bricky. Henderson spins. Taken away by Butler. Abdel Nabi thought he had an offensive board. Augman is picked up quickly by Hurley. They get inside to Johnson for the game's first. And now it is four. Nothing as that low post play for the first time. Vegas able to hit a field goal down low. Brent, that was Bricky stuck with Johnson. Johnson loves to play against a smaller man down there. Hurley picking up his dribble, quite surprising. He likes to keep it on the floor. Leitner, the dribble behind the back, and now Bricky looks into Abdel Nabi and keeps it himself. He's spotted away by Ogman and out of bounds. Now, Brent, what? Bricky is going to have to realize is Stacy Augman is going to try to help other people because he knows Bricky is not a giant scorer. So Bricky did the wise thing. He took the ball to Augman. He's going to have to drive more often. Abdul Nabi fouled by Johnson. Johnson fouled out of Saturday's semifinal victory over Georgia Tech. Brent, when he fouled out, their club was only, they got to the point of up two. Great play off the bench by Moses Scurry saved him. Now, if Johnson's going to play behind Abdel Nabi, as he did there, Duke can hit him easily in the low post. And one thing about this Duke team, they have made more free throws on the year than their opponents have shot. The ACC's leading free throw shooting team and a great advantage they have over UNLV if that turns out to be the case tonight. So a lot of people going to the line. After yeah, Nabi, perfect. Quickly into the hands of Ogman, and he is cut off by Abdel Nabi out high. Ogman likes to get into the baseline on the left side. This time he'll turn it into the paint and pass to Johnson, who was there, and Bricky fouled him. Second time tonight, Duke gets caught on a switch where Bricky ends up with Johnson. Abdul Nabi, that time on Augman, that is not what Mike Krzyzewski wants. As you can see right here, Abdul Nabi, who's supposed to be playing low post defense, gets stuck with Augman, who can beat him easily. And then Bricky, for the second time, gets stuck down there with Larry Johnson. And believe me, no 6'5 man, despite the fact that Bricky's a good leaper, is going to handle Johnson down there. Chance to complete the three point play. Breaks out. 7-2. 17.54 to go. Butler, a good defender on Leitner down inside, fighting over the top. They get into Leitner now, and he hits Abdelnabi for Duke's first field goal of the game. Talked about pillars of strength, Brent. It looks like both teams going down in low early to challenge that defense. Leitner cuts off the pass from Johnson. Anthony misses into the hands of Ricky. Good inside defense by Leitner that time. Good cut. Ricky's inside on Augman, and he drew the foul. Chance to tie it as he comes to the free throw line. This is a key to this ball game. Where Bricky likes to score, Augman doesn't have the same opportunities he did as a defender against the likes of Bo Kimball and Dennis Scott because Bricky will score down there against anybody with getting good position. Augman is going to have to be careful not to try to help out so much because Bricky will get the ball down low. Butler has it knocked away, but into the Rebels' hands. They come down with that lead just underway here in the first half from McNichols Arena. Knocked away by Henderson, but into Augman's hands. And Hunt is successfully cut off. Tremendous half-court defense being applied by Duke. Anthony would take it. 
That's his second field goal of the game. Great fake by Anthony. He looked to pass, and that throws the defenders on both sides. Three-point lead for Vegas. Ricky puts it down and lost it. Ricky's gaining some confidence, though. I think he thinks he can take Stacy, and Stacy's not concentrating 100% on Robert. Moses Scurry, the game's first sub. Billy, he turned in a powerful game against Georgia Tech. 11 rebounds in 21 minutes, six points, and his play off the bench. We talked about the, the pine to prime time. Moses was the man Saturday. Both teams caught in a half-court game. No transition play at all. This is the kind of game that Krzyzewski wanted. And he thought he could get it there. Anthony goes back in and digs it out. Tough shot. And again, a rebound for Scurry. They find Hunt. Gets inside. Over Leitner for the field goal. 11-6 now, Vegas. Good job by Hunt. So Hunt and Anthony have both gotten off the snide early, which is a good sign for Jerry Tarkanian. foul. His first of the game. We'll take a timeout. Krzyzewski complaining that he was cut off. 15-24 remaining first half. But as you study these scores on Duke's road to the national championship, look at how many points they gave up. The most that any team scored. Arkansas on Saturday with 83. This is a tough defensive unit trying to win the school's first ever national championship. 15-24 to go. First half with Billy Packer. I'm Brent Musburger. 11-6. 2-2-1. Full court press. And he gets Scurry for a double dribble. That really caught Jerry Tarkanian club off guard. Because you wouldn't have Scurry back there handling the ball. Good move by Mike Krzyzewski on the timeout. Abdul Nabi out of the game with Davis in. Ricky for the layup. 11-8. But he regains it. Hurley battling him. Tried to get it, and Bricky fouled Scurry. Now, Hurley does a great job guarding people in the backcourt, drawing the five-second count. Good job by Anthony that time to get rid of the ball just in time. Johnson returning. And when we talk about Bobby Hurley's ball handling as a freshman, he held Kenny Atkinson 5 for 14, Boo Harvey 4 for 18, and Derek Martin 1 for 9. So his defensive skills in this NCAA tournament have been almost as valuable as his ball handling. Kubek too small for Butler. Too small for Butler. Was able to front and battled it out of bounds off Butler's hands and forced the turnover. And that's because he got help from that weak side, Billy. He did. And what also happened was that Hunt was too impatient to get the ball down there. Some funny matchup matchups on the court right now as both coaches go into their bench. Good double screen from the do double low. Henderson with a lot of time misfiring. Johnson off with the rebound. Lead now to Ogman in a foot race with Kubek. Hurley's back. He'll go inside him. And a blocking foul on the point guard. Score the field goal. He is poetry in motion on the fast break. We've said this time and again throughout his career, but Stacy Ogman is the best finisher on the break that I have ever seen in college basketball. Beautiful faking. He's in control all the time. He can glide with his jumping ability. He's very smart and intelligent with his decision-making on the break, and he can use right or left hand. Super player. Fourteen twenty-nine, thirteen eight, Vegas over Duke. Leitner putting it down, and he travels. Brent, don't you sense that Duke is not right as far as getting in sync with this ball game? Here, almost had a problem with Abdul Nabi getting on the court. Would have been a technical foul. Johnson, short. They appear to be into it defensively, but they're out of sync here at the offensive end in the early minutes, Billy. 
Now Henderson on the inside against Johnson hits the field goal, and that is his first of the game. Smart play by Larry Johnson. He wasn't in the right position, so instead of chopping with the foul, he stays in the game. That's more important than trying to block that shot. Hunts three. Big play for Jerry Tarkanian. Now Hurley, the last time down floor, tried to penetrate with the dribble. He's picking up his dribble too early against Vegas. They overplay well on the pass. To Leitner in low. <laughs> Butler coming after him, fouled him. His first. Now UNLV, and they are within 85 points of breaking the tournament scoring record. Twice they have gone over 100 against Arkansas Little Rock and Loyola Marymount. Brent, that held by that Billy Tubbs Oklahoma club that holds the record for scoring but did not win the championship as Danny Manning went crazy. Leitner, the best free throw shooter on the Duke squad, led the Atlantic Coast Conference in free throw shooting. Very unusual for a center. Abdul Nabi reporting back in, and Leitner will be given a break here. 13-20. Billy, what about the altitude? How did you think it affected the players on Saturday, and what should we look for here tonight? It looked like Arkansas was affected more than anybody else. What's going to affect Duke right now is that matchup with Kubek on Butler. Good steal. Davis coming away with it. Short. Kubek very short, and Hill cleaning up underneath, and the foul. Number two on Ogman. Got some tight releases out there. That shot by Kubek, you talk about air balls, that was about five feet short. Her, Kubek coming off the stack. Takes the pass from Hurley. He's got Abdel Nabi down low. Hurley able to swing in one of Abdel Nabi and Johnson read it. Now into the hands of Hunt. Two on one. Great job by Hunt, and he also is a finisher with a dunk. At just 6-2, we've seen him do that time and time again. Great play by Larry Johnson on defense down low. And there's another one. And coming out is Anthony into the hands of Hunt. This time, he was fouled by Hurley, and Krzyzewski doesn't like that call. But there's no question, Hurley got him on the arm, and Hunt again, not afraid to take it right in on the drive. Larry Johnson is just playing a great game on the defensive end of the court. He got stuck the first time in the game playing down low and behind. Now he's starting to front the post, and Duke is not getting their lob to work effectively at all. Then I like the substitution coming in here by Jerry Tarkanian now. With a little bit of a working margin, he's going to try to go to his bench a little deeper. He did not get a good play off the bench the other day, except by Scurry, who had the big game. And here we see Travis Bice coming in. Probably, to, as you can see, coming in for Hunt. So he's just going to take a gamble here and see if he can get some minutes, quality minutes, off that bench other than Scurry. Smart coaching move. And we also saw Henderson check back into the game for the Blue Devils. And now Bice will replace Hunt. And if you're going to need your subs at the end of the game, let them get a little taste of the game in the first half. Because it's hard to come in cold if you've never played before. Steal by Augman. Henderson's back. He's special. Duke has not adjusted in their half-court offense at all. Very tentative. Duke has turned it over seven times here in the Eight. early goal. <laughs> Johnson back to Augman. Wanted Johnson. Look at Johnson's quickness. What a play! Saves it, and here's Anthony. Now it's Bice. Inside to Augman. Oh. Abdel Nabi there, and Hill comes away with it for the Blue Devils. Well, the, the team on the floor now for Duke, and you talk about a gutsy move by Mike Krzyzewski. He only has two starters on the floor, and his club in serious trouble. 
he may have to really hustle to get somebody else in the game. He, his club's totally out of sync. Hill putting it down, and he is fouled. Let's watch this save again by Johnson as he was going out of bounds in the sideline. An All-American player in every respect. Tremendous attitude, tremendous work ethic, and obviously very talented. And probably fortunate that he wasn't injured on that play, the way he was cut down at the ankle. I was worried about the floor, not Johnson. He's too <laughs> strong to get hurt. He'll be right back. Vegas with its biggest lead of the game. You know, Jerry Tarkanian, he really works the country to get his players. First he goes down to Texas and California, Washington, D.C., homeboy, and then Detroit, Michigan, and then he stirs them up and fill a hot all double-digit scores, one first-team All-American and Johnson, and three honorable mentions. Quite a crew put together by the Shark. And for Mike Krzyzewski, he has to figure out a way to overcome this great defense Vegas has put on him. Good steal again. Lead to Hunt, and Ballesteros going down on the break. And for those fans that wonder, that's the rub of the green right there. Obviously, Hunt would have been able to catch that ball if he hadn't run into the official. But it's got to be turned over to Duke. Great defense so far by Vegas. Duke not in their half-court offense at all. Duke's average turnovers has been 15, and already there are nine here tonight. Leitner misfiring, taken away by Abdel Nabi. Over the top of Scurry. Hesitation dribble. No place to go. Now it's Hurley trying to squeeze through, and he does. This is Bricky. No basket. The foul is going to go against Scurry. Probably a pretty good foul for the simple reason that Bricky had an easy one. Pretty tough for a guy like Scurry to draw the charge. You can see him stepping over. As he does, he tries to get a piece of Hurley. Without question, he didn't have his feet planted when Hurley made the move to the side. And a brilliant move by Hurley it was not to draw the charge. Billy team fouls. Six against the Rebels and five on the Blue Devils. But for UNLV, there's been good distribution on the fouls. Henderson at the top off the fake Butler very concerned about not picking up a foul normally he'd go for the block there and probably could have had that one because Henderson was off bounce here's Hunt gets to the baseline on Hurley gets him in the air and then bangs in another field goal that's 10 first half points now for Anderson Hunt. Well, and if you're a Vegas fan you have to feel very comfortable now because they just don't lose when Hunt is hot Johnson now fronting the low post players Ricky puts it down and then kind of went up too softly on it From McNichols Arena, battle for the national championship. UNLV has led it all the way. It's 23-15 with 10.08 to go in the first half. And Brent, I don't think anybody's called a time. Yes, Jerry now, and he, he wonders why his players are over there. And the official's saying, hey, nobody's got an official timeout. Now we'll take a break. That timeout was called by Las Vegas. That was confirmed, and the officials just didn't pick it up. The players had gone over to the sideline, so Vegas brings it down now. They've led it all the way. It's 23-15, 10 minutes to go now, and Young, who is checked in off the Rebel bench, goes to Butler, who's out high. Abdul Nabi there as Anthony gets on the inside and knocks down another field goal, and that is six. And now, Billy, their guards have 16 points. They have, they have 16 points, and to me, they have set a stage in this game that's going to be very difficult for Duke to handle. Now they go to the amoeba defense. First time tonight we've seen the zone. Henderson, the man that would want to shoot. Looking for it. Coming up short, Johnson rebounding. Anthony eyeing the floor. A very positive start here for the running revs. And Hunt missing that time and into Leitner's hands. 
Wanted to up-tempo the game a little bit. And I think Mike Krzyzewski at that time now told his team to up-tempo. They're playing very passively up to this point. Henderson coming in. Hitting that one. Giving him six three field goals on the evening now. 25, 17, and nine minutes. Young puts it down. Oh, right there, and he got it up over him. Pine to prime time. Very young, big shot. And there they are in the zone. Shaped out like a 1 3 1. And then takes the shape of the offense. Another Duke turnover. That is 10 for the game as Hurley fired that one out of bounds. Bobby Hurley, surprisingly to me, Brent, for the first time in the tournament, has crossed half court picked up his dribble. He's done that constantly tonight, whether it's man to man or zone. Against the club, it's a good defensive team. The point guard has got to keep his dribble alive. The foul against Duke. And on Brian Davis, his first. Ogman watching from the Rebel bench. Hunt leading their scores with 10. Ogman with four. Johnson with five. Butler yet to score. Anthony has six. Anthony wants Johnson low. Couldn't do anything, and it'll be Anthony coming down to the baseline. Excellent two-man game. And now Young hits the three, and he's got five points off that rebel bench. And Jerry Tarkanian's towel is under his seat. When he sees points coming from the right kind of people he never expected, he's got to be comfortable right now. And look at the amoeba stretching out farther and farther each time down the court. Defense has been too tough for Duke. Got to break somebody up to the top of the foul line to handle that ball a little bit. Knocked away from Henderson. Another turnover. Lead pass for Anthony. That's to save it, but into Davis's hands. And Brent Duke is going to have to start beating UNLV back down the floor because they're not scoring against their half-court defense. Hurley misfiring badly. He has not had a field goal since the UCLA game. Leitner coming inside, and Abdul Nabi fouled. Good foul by Jones that time. So Jones, Young, have all played extremely well coming in off the bench, as did Scurry. And the Shark doesn't have much to fret about at this time. Early will sit down, and Bill McCaffrey, freshman out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, We'll check in and so too will Stacy Sianovich. So the Sharks saw that change and immediately sent Sianovich out onto the floor and started nibbling a little bit on that town. Well, you know, the towel all started way back when Tark used to get a dry mouth and he didn't like to drink water because the cups always fell on the floor and spilled out. So he's the one that came up with the idea of sucking on that towel and he's been doing it ever since. Duke is very tight. Only three of seven from the line. And they normally are a good free throw shooting team. Vegas leading at 30 to 17 at the seven minute mark. And able now to play with only two starters on the floor. So everybody's getting that rest. Good screen by Jones. Hunt comes inside. Winds up in the hands of Davis, but Sianovich gets it back, and now Hunt arches a three. McCaffrey coming out, and he's stopped by Hunt immediately. See, Duke is not forcing the ball up the court quickly. It allows Vegas to get set. Henderson. Eight points for Henderson. Johnson, and he's fouled. Abdul Nabi. He just doesn't allow you to get close enough to him to block the shot. Uses those 250 pounds to keep everybody away. 
And you know, Brent, we talked about the experience of Duke in the Final Four, but nobody at Duke has the experience of Stacy Augman, who played in both the Olympics and the World University Games, and a guy like Larry Johnson, who led the American team to the gold medal in the World University Games. So they have been to huge games like this in the past. Johnson, as a matter of fact, was the outstanding player on that gold medal team, although he had not yet played a game against a Division I foe. Funny hesitation on that shot. You know, none other than a guy who really knows when people put in effort, Gene Cady of Purdue, told me, who was the coach of that team, said that Larry Johnson might be the best person player that he has ever had on the squad. So he's got more than physical talent. Thirty-two to nineteen. Six ten to go. One three one. Park has had a masterful game so far. His kids are doing everything he has. Another turnover, and it's Janovich coming down, and he is fouled. What performance from the bench tonight. Sianovic, who had his hands full against Georgia Tech and the likes of Kenny Anderson, given valuable minutes. Krzyzewski uses a timeout. 32 to 19, he's down 13. Vegas' is biggest lead of the game. You are looking live at Denver, Colorado, a city which has done a splendid job of hosting this NCAA championship game. As for the contest, it has been all the running reps as they attempt to win their first national championship. And Brent, what Jerry Tarkanian is getting now is, is really a, a great advantage because his bench has played so well that he's able to rest his starters. Duke cannot afford with this type of a lead that has uh, come on against them to go with the bench. So if they're going to make a run, they've got to do it in the next 553 to get it down under double figures. Billy, how could the point guard play improve for the Blue Devils? Well, I think what Bobby Hurley, who's not in the game now, and McCaffrey, who's really not a point guard, they've got to drive the ball up court and force the defense to pick up the dribbler. They're not doing that at all. There's another example. Off his foot. Ball is tied up. Mike, and goal. Mike Krzyzewski will have to come back. Here he is. He's coming back with Hurley. He has no one out there to force the ball up court. McCaffrey, McCaffrey not ready to play at this level of competition in that role. Thirteen turnovers by the Blue Devils here in the early going. Well, UNLV will force 20 turnovers plus a game, so that's not unusual for them, but Duke's been able to hold that off. Augman, not an outside shooter. He was thinking about that one. Traveling, it goes over for the Blue Devils. Well, Stacy has 16 threes this year. His first year on playing at UNLV as a freshman only shot three all year long. Billy, to give the folks an idea about this Vegas defense, not only 13 turnovers, but they're shooting only 42% from the field here. Now Kubek gives it up to Henderson. Sianovich was flying at him, and he misses. Scurry off with a rebound, and this is some show by the running reps. Now Duke is standing still so much. A fumble shot. He likes that fadeaway jumper. An offensive rebound. The putback wouldn't stay. Scurry a second time. Can't get it to fall. And Henderson comes out with the dribble. While Scurry is arguing with the official, Duke gets their first chance at a fast break. Curley. Fouled by Bice. And Jerry Tarkanian goes crazy at Moses. And what he's telling him, don't argue with the officials. Run back down on defense. Now, remember Saturday? He did a similar thing. The only problem was the ball popped loose. He was at the wrong place at the right time and ended up with a layup. But eventually, that's going to work against you. You can't stand there and argue with the ref. And that's why James Jones is off the Vegas bench and Abdul Nabi in the Duke lineup. These free throws could be a key for Hurley. He has not shot well. As I said, hasn't had a field goal since the UCLA game. That's a long, long time ago. He needs to get the field and the ball going in the basket. His first point of the game, Billy. No assists and three turnovers. Played 43 minutes against Connecticut with eight assists and just two turnovers against a team that played aggressive 
half-court pressing defense. That picture of the bench told you that Anthony and Hunter back on the floor now for the Rebs. Well, Jerry goes back with his regular starting lineup. And Ogman, power underneath. Henderson losing it, but it is picked up by Davis, and Anthony almost stole it, and now Hurley gets it back. They go in deep to Abdelnavi. Great help from the weak side by Johnson. The Rebels are flying at the Blue Devils, but that time, Abdelnavi putting in the field goal. Eight points for the game. And there was a case where a great clear out in the low post for Larry Johnson. Isolated completely down there was Leitner. No help whatsoever. And you'll watch him turn and use that tremendous upper body strength to go right at Christian Leitner. There it is, the touch. Backs Leitner off. And despite the, the disadvantage in size, he gets it off. You cannot afford to not have somebody doubling down on him to make it a little tougher for him to turn and face. Perfect from that line. The difference in this game from Saturday's semifinals is that Las Vegas came to play tough defense in the first half. They That's waited until the second half against Georgia Tech. Leitner from the right baseline. That's his first field goal there of the game. Safety. There's that high lob. Duke was hoping to prevent it, but they could not. Great eye contact that time between Greg Anthony and Stacy Ogden. They made the eye contact almost 50 feet from the basket. And Stacy just took off. Total domination here by UNLV on both ends of the floor. The quickness on defense. That's the move by Hurley. You got to dribble into the middle of that zone. And it opened it up for Leitner. 41-27. Las Vegas. The switch now. Abdelnabi on Johnson. Great block. Brent, we'll see what I was talking about. The eye contact had already been made. There's Stacy Ogden with that tremendous ability of his to glide through the air and a great catch. Excellent pass by Greg Anthony, who's having a superlative game running the show. Knocked out of bounds by Davis. As you watch Ogden and the running ribs tonight, notice how Stacy always comes down the left sideline and Hunt down the right to look for the three. Augman down the left to look for the dunk. Good transition game. Johnson. Offensive foul is the call. Larry Johnson really didn't need to take that shot, and he knows it. He's smiling, coming up off the floor, and Scurry's going to get him out of there so that he doesn't pick up another foul. Johnson will come back down the floor with two personal fouls. So it will be Johnson still out there. Scurry having checked back in the game. Ogman up front. Anthony and Hunt on that backcourt. Hurley. Henderson. Rookie Davis and Henderson. Billy on a four for two. They switch back to man-to-man. -man. Even though the zone was extremely effective, they switch back to man-to-man. -man. And the foul goes against Vegas as Scurry came out high. That's number two. Jerry Tarkanian's having one of those games as a coach where every move that he makes is turning out successful. He's changed his defenses at the right time. Substitutions have worked perfectly. He's living a charm life right now. And obviously his players are executing well. Continues to struggle. Scurry alone for the lob. Nobody's picked him up. Deflected into the hands of Leitner. And lead to Davis. And foul. He'll shoot a pair, and the field goal would have counted had it gone through. This may sound crazy, but Vegas, known as the running Rebs, I think if Duke's going to get back in the game, they're going to have to be the running Dukes. 
because the half-court game not playing into their hands at all. Brent, the ACC has taken over the years 24 different teams to the Final Four, but they've only won four championships. Back in 57, Carolina won one, and then, of course, the great David Thompson team, the great Michael Jordan and James Worthy team in 82, and, of course, Jimmy Valvano's magical year in 83. Oh, Leitner took a blow right in the face. By a teammate, so when it's going bad, it's really going bad for Mike Krzyzewski's club. Even from the free throw line where they are very proficient normally. 41-29 is our score. Good half-court movement by UNLV. And then you know who they're looking for. There it is. Ah! With emphasis. Moses Scurry, his first field goal. Scurry came in from the weak side. Larry Johnson posting up. Everybody was looking at him, and the inside was open. Boy, Anderson Hunt really sitting down on Bobby Hurley. Won't let him penetrate with the dribble. Deep. Abdul Nabi for the layup. Ten points. And there's Hunt going down the right side. Score. Leitner taps it into the hands of Vegas. And Anthony. I don't ever remember a Duke team having as much adversity. No matter what they do, it goes sour on them. There they had a chance for an easy fast break. And it turned out 3-0 in the other direction. Leitner turns around, and Abdel Nabi to put it back, misfiring, and a foul is going to be called on the inside against Johnson. Ben, I'm really surprised Jerry Tarkanian put Johnson back in the ball game to pick up that foul. You know who altered the shot on Abdel Nabi? Again, it was the great defensive play by Stacy Augment. So with three fouls, Johnson sits down. Right next to Scurry. There was nothing to gain by having Johnson in the ball game with this le little time left in the half. With this big a lead. And UNLV can hold the ball down there to give Duke very little time. There's only 52 seconds left in the half. This game reminds you a little bit of the way UNLV was having adversity with Georgia Tech in the first half of the semifinal game. They weren't in sync, but they really came out in the second half and played great ball. So that's what Duke will have to do if they expect to get back in this thing. Clock running down now in the first half. Makes sense to work it all the way down. If you're Duke now, you don't want a silly foul. You've got the clock as, as one of your teammates. It'll be Anthony up over the top with the 11.8 seconds. It'll be Duke's ball. Mike Krzyzewski wisely gets Hurley in the game for this last 10 seconds. And as crazy as it seems, if Duke were to score here, they'd have it down to 10 points. And you seem like they were, you know, completely out of this ballgame. McCaffrey will be on the floor with Hurley, Kubek, Henderson, and Abdul Nabi. Hurley tries to drive it through, and McCaffrey comes up, and he is fouled. And this has been a tough night for officials. A couple of them have gone down now. Great pass by Hurley inside. McCaffrey went back door.
Brett, the official that went down is a man named Ed Hightower, who's an outstanding educator, and his dedication to school as well as officiating necessitates that he goes through a full school day, and then when he's going to officiate, goes out to an airport and takes a private plane to the game, flies back after the game so he can be on time for school the next day. One of the real top educators in America. Very dedicated guy. He's out of Alton, Illinois. With six seconds to go, UNLV has a lot of time, and I'd be looking for Anderson Hunt if I were Greg Anthony, because he's going to be busting out down the right side. Surprisingly, Larry Johnson back in the game. They want him in there to make the long throw, but instead he hands it off quickly to Anthony, who brings it up. Time for Anthony. Oh, yeah. it it. And we have come to the end of the first half. It has been a Vegas story here. Shark-infested waters in Denver. Greg, Take a look at Anthony here, Billy. Brent, he has had a marvelous first half in every respect. There's a problem over here. Excellent shot by Anthony. I don't know why there could be any controversy about the time. Obviously, that had to count. There should have been no question. It's on the board. 47-35, the end of the first half. Jim Nance will be coming your way as our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the 1990 NCAA Basketball Championship Game is sponsored by the new generation of Oldsmobile, official car for the NCAA Championship. Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, no when to say when. And by UPS, fast, efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. From the Mile High City, we've seen the running rebels with a cause. In pursuit of their first national championship, leading by 12 at the half, a lead that's been as high as 16 at one point. Jim Nance along with uh, Mike Francesa. And Mike, what about the performance in the first half by UNLV? Just a, a dominating performance both ways, Jim. I thought Bobby Hurley would have to, with a penetration dribble, get it going against the UNLV defense in the half court. He couldn't do that. They shut that down. They got their transition game going. They played a great first half. Hurley and the Blue Devils did indeed look shaky. 14 turnovers in the first half for Duke. You know, each stop on the road to the Final Four leaves us with a special set of memories. From the major upsets to the smallest details. From the laughter and cheers to the disappointments and tears. Together, they lend this tournament a unique and unforgettable texture. The unexpected is the expected thing in this tournament. If you ever want to do the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, this is the tournament to do it in. Buzzer beater games, the games when emotionally you had satisfied yourself that a game had come to an end and then all of a sudden, bang, a shot was taken and, and the whole game had changed. Morrell takes the ball, looking inbound, loops it far up court for George who catches it, turns around, shoots, and he got it! You see the ecstatic moments, uh, you, you captured some great pictures, some ecstatic moments when people had won that buzzer beater uh, to, the, to the looks on faces of people like myself that had been stunned at the last second. Uh, those, are, those are memories, uh, those are sights that you can't forget. I think the best sixth man in this particular tournament has been the timekeeper. <laughs> I think the biggest kick I got out of the whole tournament is flashing into the stands and seeing the children of the coaches, uh, the wives, the mothers and fathers, and just the emotion. Uh, I probably had as much enjoyment watching as actually the games, and the games couldn't have been any better. If you look at the ball games they've had, I mean, I've had heartbeats, and I got up a couple times and went in the other room because I got nervous. 
I think that we sometimes just forget, though, that uh, these kids are 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, and guys are making shots in the last seconds that, that mean a lot. Hunter, unable to get inside. Oh, Zuby. shuffled the cards again and started the tournament all over again, you'd probably see maybe four different teams, at least three different teams in the final four this year. You're going to the pot. And maybe you have to leave a little early because you said you've been invited and it takes part. It's one of the greatest fiestas of all time. moment for me. Before I take each left-handed free throw, uh, that's Bo Kimball's moment to think about Hank Davis. That is the most memorable. Uh, uh, after that, I didn't know or care whether we won the game or not. Never wanted a shot to win more than, than that left-handed shot. still remember uh, this team as a, a very strong bunch of guys who uh, have a, the heart of a lion, uh, just like Hank did. And I think that he's touched the lives of a lot of people in America. And uh, and they know he's a special person. I feel, feel real good that I had a chance to know him. College basketball and the NCAA, a great American tradition. But there's more to it than just a tournament. The NCAA is also taking the lead in the war against drug and alcohol abuse. While young people face healthy competition on the court, too often they face deadly peer pressure to use drugs off the court. So get involved, volunteer, and help the NCAA Foundation be what I call a point of light. Duke trails by 12. Keep in mind the largest deficit at halftime overcome to win the national championship in the championship game. 1963, eight-point deficit. Loyal, it came from eight down at the half against Cincinnati. Can Duke do it here tonight, Mike? Sounds like a tough chore, but to do it, Jim, they're going to have to become the running Blue Devils. They couldn't score in a half court against UNLV. They're going to have to push the ball to get it done. All right, Mike, let's check out the thoughts now of this Duke team as they headed to the locker room. Let's go inside the arena right now, behind the scenes with James Brown. JB? All right, Jimmy, I'm in front of the Duke locker room. Now, we all know Mike Krzyzewski as being the epitome of calm and gentlemanlike manners, but let me tell you, no one should doubt his competitiveness. For the first six minutes of his conversation in the locker room, it was an old-fashioned tongue lashing, and I can't begin to paraphrase because we're still in the family hour. But suffice it to say that he challenged the team's collective heart and their guts. Specifics, the big men have got to make themselves a little bigger, more aggressive on the inside. The guards, especially Bobby Hurley, as Mike Francesa indicated, having trouble breaking that perimeter pressure defense of uh, UNLV. They've got to get inside to break it down and cut down on the turnovers. That's a big, tough task for them in the second half. Now let's go over to Leslie in front of the UNLV locker room. Well, James, it's sort of seashells and balloons over here, as Al McGuire used to say. Rebel assistant Tim Gergerich told me they're particularly pleased with UNLV's half-court defense. He said you'll see the same changing up of man-to-man -to, -man to zone because Larry Johnson has three fouls. One of their other goals was to go at Bobby Hurley hard, stop him on the penetration, which we've seen has been done effectively. Hurley's turned the ball over three times. One more note, before the game, the leading rusher in the history of the NFL, Walter Payton, addressed the Rebels in the locker room, and he told them three things. He told them to go out and have fun. He told them to remember what it took them to get here. And he also told them to be aware of the opportunities if they were to win a national championship. Brent? Uh, Leslie, it took sweetness to turn on the running ref. You know, for as long as we have televised this NCAA basketball tournament, one of the most important members of our team has been the Emmy Award-winning director, Bob Fishman. Now, unfortunately, Bob cannot be with us tonight because he's back in a New York City hospital battling cancer. I spoke with him this afternoon, and Bob said to tell all his friends that he's feeling much better. Well, Bob, normally on this night, we celebrate your birthday. And since you can't be with us here tonight, we want to send along this very special greeting card. Sports coverage of the 1990 NCAA Basketball Championship Game is sponsored by Pizza Hut, 
an official NCAA corporate sponsor. Pizza Hut, making it great. Diet Pepsi, shoot for the great taste of Diet Pepsi, the right one. And by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Well, Billy Packer, uh, the University of Nevada at Las Vegas has led it all the way, and uh, what must Duke do here? long time and I guarantee he went after his club if we're gonna lose I'm sure he said we're gonna lose going down swinging and that's what we're gonna see in this second half Billy let's quickly check some numbers there and they don't lie everything is coming up the run and rip fast break particularly you can see they've been much more aggressive Duke has got to push the ball up the floor both full court and half court if they expect to get back in it and if you're Jerry Tarkanian I'm sure you're gonna start whipping your club early here if they take any time to relax they start off at that tough man-to-man. -to -man. Deep to Leitner. Tries to bat it in. And finally it is Johnson coming away from the Rebs, who are now inside of 20 minutes for their first national championship. Foul against Duke. And for Leitner, that is number three. And Leitner did not put the ball up tough down on the other end of the floor. He had Larry Johnson beat and out of position and just kind of tossed it up easy. Augman taking the inbounds pass, Bricky on him. Butler whips it back to the top, and there is Johnson. That's what he did on Saturday. He hit a three against Georgia Tech in the first half, and now it is 50-35. Jerry Tarkanian probably hoping he misses a couple of those jumpers, the pro scouts. Or just drooling when he can step outside and hit that one as well as play the low post. I'm continuing to keep Hurley on the outside. Now it is Ricky looking in. Abdel Nabi fronted by Johnson, so they'll stay at the perimeter. Henderson. That's 10 points for Phil. The clock is stopped as the ball being retrieved. Brent fatigue should not be a factor because both teams rested a lot of people early on. Vegas getting great play out of their bench. Duke just ordinary. Constant motion in Vegas tonight. Johnson missing. Abdelnabi hands to Hurley. That time he tried to drive it in and he was more successful. It'll be Henderson. And he has put together field goals. But that's the answer, and Mike Krzyzewski comes flying off the bench. That's, I'm sure, what he wants his club to do. Force things down inside, even if it's not there. He's got to take some chances. They were down 16. Now it's back to 11. Good push. Deep to oh, Beautiful play. In behind the defense and help not there quick enough. His first field goal of the game for the senior center, David Butler. You cannot feed the post any better than that. Abdel Nabi. And Leitner being pushed by Butler. These are the deficits Duke has overcome in the tournament. Trailing St. John's. UCLA was close all the way. Came back from a five-point deficit against Connecticut. And in our Arkansas game, they were down seven. And Brent, most of those, if not all, were in the second half. But they have to show a different sign of a game in order to give you any confidence they can make the comeback here. Leitner from the left baseline. Henderson now watching from the sideline. And here's Hondalone coming in on Leitner, and it'll fall. Beautifully executed, delayed fast break. Butler took the ball right down the center and put the wide side. Leitner with three fouls could not jump on him as aggressively as he normally would have. Davis now coming in on the inside. It'll be Johnson with his second three-point attempt, and he's perfect. And who would have thunk it that he's going to come down there and stop from about 22 feet and drill two? Kubek and Henderson will have to check back in for the Blue Devils. Augman cuts off rookie. It'll be Leitner again. Team starting to pick up offensively, but Duke 
just can't stop UNLV now. That delayed fast break is working beautifully. Off the fake, Johnson able to penetrate, and then the pass. And Butler missing. Abdel Nabi gets it into Hurley's hands, but the defense is back. And Brent, look at the big men from Duke. They did not even cross the top of the key on the far end of the court. Abdel Nabi and Christian Leitner were still down at the other foul line on that transition break. Very unusual, and they have to be exhausted. Only three and a half minutes have transpired in the second half, but they just are out of breath. Now it is Hill out there with Davis, Henderson, Hurley, and Kubek. Short lineup for the Blue Devils. Down 57-45, 16-30 left in regulation. A lineup that doesn't match up at all with UNLV. Anthony fouled him. Three starters on the bench. Mike Krzyzewski's shown a lot of courage here, but they just couldn't go any further. He had to look down the floor and see eight players on one end of the court and his two big men 60 feet away. You've got to take them out. Greg Anthony, an outstanding young fellow, both on and off the floor, having an outstanding game here tonight. pressure in the next couple of minutes going to be put on Phil Henderson to score. Now, anytime he's led them in scoring, they're 15-0. and 0. He's got 13 right now, so that may break that string. A 10-point game. 16-24 in regulation. Hurley picks up Anthony. Great Kubek on Butler. He's the man that could get it. Hunt off the fake. Up over Hurley with the field goal. 14 for Anderson Hunt. Henderson's three. Duke doesn't have one tonight. Out of bounds. Las Vegas. So we'll take a break. 15.56 to go. And running revs. 59 to Duke's 47. Watch here, we've got five Duke players all ahead of Anderson Hunt right here, who's gonna break down the right side. Butler will occupy the defense by going down the center, and watch how the perfect delayed fast break works. Here comes Hunt, beating him down the floor, and the man that was last in the race ends up first at the, at the gate. With Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger. 15.50 to go in regulation. It's been all Vegas tonight, they're up 59.47. Leitner out on Johnson, who puts it on the floor on the dribble and comes up and uses the glass. 18 points now for the big man. And they go back to the amoeba defense. Stretching out to find the man. It's a matchup developed by Buzz Riddle. At nice pass by Abdel Nabi. No basket. Foul before the shot. So a reminder that at the conclusion of this championship game, we'll select the Chevrolet players of the game. And in conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both the University of Nevada at Las Vegas and Duke. Still don't have a three. Knocked away. And Ogman up with it. It's a three on two. Hurley contains him. Cross the hunt. Here's the three. Brett, this club has won 20 of 21 games. The only loss is UC Santa Barbara. In that game, Anderson Hunt and Greg Anthony only made five of 21 shots from the three-point range. You can see tonight that's not the case at all. Another turnover. Ogman forces the pace. Finds Hunt on the break. Beautiful. Timeout, Duke. to a title. You know, when you got it right, you got it right. Whether you're talking about this, or whether you're talking about the one and only Diet Cola that does it for Ray, Diet Pepsi. You know, nothing tastes as good to me as Diet Pepsi. Hmm. 
All right, now, who was the wise guy? Diet Pepsi with 100% NutraSweet. Now, that's the right one, baby. <laughs> 50 years, the quiet company. Billy Packer, I'm Brett Musburger. Las Vegas with nine straight points here at McNichols Arena. They lead at 66-47, and they are dominating all the statistics. Hitting 61% and allowing only 47. They have never trailed. I bet they're really getting confidence now. There it is again. Another steal. It was Ackman Hunt right down the middle. 21, and it is a magnificent performance by the University of Nevada at Las Vegas. Whoops to Leitner from Hurley. Misses, and that's an indication of how this game is gone. At the other end, it is Hunt bringing it into the pass. Hoffman, and it's all the running revs. They feel it now, and Krzyzewski will use another timeout. Twice in this NCAA tournament, UNLV has scored better than 100 points. Tonight, they needed just 85 to break the tournament's six-game record. Right now, they're sitting on 70. And Billy Packer, they should get that breezy with 14-19 to go the way they have played here tonight. They have, and they haven't done it by outscoring their opponent on just the offensive end. Their defense has just stifled Duke, taking away every opportunity for Duke to get back in this ballgame. Duke's ball, they've been forcing bad shots. Mike Krzyzewski on that last timeout has gone back with a team that is very, very small. He only has two starters in the game. Ricky and Hurley, the big men are out of the game. Difficult to even find an open man. And as you watch the screen, just notice how the white jerseys close in on Duke whenever they get the ball down in low. Coming through two, Great and the defense was there again. And now it's into the hands of Butler. Everybody runs the floor right now. Mike Krzyzewski, in order to keep this somewhat respectable, will have to come back with size. This is a 15-0 run. Hurley gets inside, whips the pass. And that time, it was number four on Augment. Well, we thought fouls would be a factor, but when you get a game like this, it's not. There goes Stacy out. Remember the story of the Olympics. Made the squad as the defensive stopper, and then was so disappointed. Left his bronze medal on the bed, never to see it again. I talked to him about the Olympics, and he said, even if we win this national championship, it will never take away the disappointing memories of not winning the gold medal in Seoul. There's a man that has really led things for his club tonight. Greg Anthony. Total domination in this game. Hurley squeezes through. What a rebound. Big man. Larry Johnson off with the rebound. 72-47. Hunt hits a three. And folks, this one's all Vegas. For me, you know what's unusual? We've had some games in the final championship where I really felt this was the potential for a blowout. You always told me, no, no, I think they can stay in there. You never made that statement about this one. And I, and I really felt, I, I was, a, no, I, no, I honestly felt that this was going to be a very competitive game. I, you know, I tend to agree with you, though. It's been a nightmare for Mike Shushesky. Leitner coming through, through the foul. But when we were out on the West Coast, in Oakland, the way they approached the Loyola Marymount game convinced me that the Vegas team really was the squad to beat coming in here to the, the Final Four. Now, I thought they were very sluggish, and so did you in that first half against Georgia Tech. Well, in that game, I thought, and, and they should show respect for Kenny Anderson, but I thought they showed so much respect it took away from their tenacious defensive tendencies that they usually have. But that wasn't the case tonight at all. They went after Bobby Hurley. They took away Duke's half-court offense and then did it down at their end of the court as well. And that ends an 18-0 Vegas run here at 13-04, 75-48. Tark up off that bench, walking up and down, trying to pretend like he's concerned. 
But for all the adversity that man has had of late, you know he has to be satisfied the way this club's playing. Yeah, we're going to talk about some of the problems that the Rebels have faced this year and apparently have managed to conquer. Hunt with the three, short, into the hands of McCaffrey. Forcing another bad pass saved by Hurley. It has been such a struggle when you watch Duke with the ball. And that was Hunt flying at McCaffrey. Kubek getting it back. Davis didn't have it. Leitner battling away on the inside. First time Leitner has been able to finish one off on the inside. Hurley out on Sianovich, causing him trouble. And the blocking foul is called. He tried to draw a charge, and Hightower said no way. Excellent piece of officiating there. Hurley slammed down on the floor, showing his protest. Hightower realizing, hey, that's not a factor in this game. Instead of calling the cheap technical foul, showed good patience here as an official. Now watch this. Hurley will slam the floor if we see it. And Hightower says, no, this is not the time for a technical foul. Good common sense officiating. Lob deep to Scurry. We're seeing a clinic. There is no phase of the game that UNLV hasn't outperformed Duke in. McCaffrey. That was the play early on against that zone. Drive it down in there with the dribble. Butler. Foul by Leitner. And that's number four. Now you start to wonder how many points can Vegas score in this one. And the most points in a championship game was scored against Duke back in 1964 by UCLA. 98 points. And Brent, I remember that game so well. That was the outstanding Jeff Mullins club that was going to the Final Four for two years in a row. Art Heyman the year before in 63. UCLA with the Fame Press. John Wooden's first national championship team behind Gail Goodrich and Walt Hazard. It looked like Duke was in control of the game, and all of a sudden the press came, came on, and they couldn't hold back the Bruins, and it was the beginning of some great basketball history for John Wooden and his program. Really with David Butler at the free throw line. Bison has checked back in. Butler, who last year really struggled from the free throw line, looked so smooth on that one. National Junior College Player of the Year two years ago. Jerry has really put together some club here. But they were the consensus pick to be number one in the nation before it all started, so it's not like this is a surprise. Henderson. Missing Scurry down with the rebound. Henderson has scored 14 in this game. You can hear the Vegas fans getting nervous. They want to see Vice hit a three. Butler, fouled by Abdel Nabi. Number two. Well, here is the sound of Scurry. Missing Scurry down with the rebound. Scurry, one of four brothers that have played college basketball. Another outstanding junior college player came from the national junior ca uh, college champion, San Jacinto. Pick Vegas because he liked the light show before the game. <laughs> and that's Young of Las Vegas committing his first personal foul. But, you know, Young may have set the stage for this game, Brent, when he came in and played perfectly, scored a basket, then hit a three early on. Bobby Hurley sorely disappointed. Everybody knows what happened the other day in terms of his problems with his stomach. Billy, while we've got a second, we want to send along our best wishes to colleague Hubie Brown, who is recovering in the hospital in Los Angeles. I spoke to Hubie today, and uh, he collapsed prior to our coverage of the Los Angeles Laker game over the weekend, and was rushed to a hospital out there, and blood clot was taken care of, and he's feeling much better. Here it is Anthony coming up with a shot. Abdelnabi down with a rebound. 10.50 to go, 79-53, UNLV. I bet you Duke players think there are six Vegas players playing defense on half court against them. There's just a man every passing lane. 
There was at least the sixth as Henderson comes back and fouls Anthony, who came up with the steal. Well, Bice tried to go ahead and set a screen on the defender. Drake probably would have been best to pass the ball back. Early and Thomas Hill back into the lineup for Duke. See Jerry Turkanian over there walking that sidelines. Timmy Gergrich is outstanding staff. Interesting, Tark says, I'd never hire an assistant coach that owns a set of golf clubs or a camper. And, and that assistant group he has over there, I can assure you, don't own either. and still ten and a half minutes to go. Hurley hounded by Anderson Hunt. Gets inside him and Johnson nailed the pass. So Henderson gets the ball and there are two men on him. Just this is a great matchup defense. And Duke just can't get it to fall. Henderson managed to take it away from Young, but coming back up has it stripped. Johnson's great hands. Hunt wants the three. Instead, it'll be Johnson coming in now. And traveling is the call. One of the officials is going to call the foul on Johnson, which would have been number four, but he was overruled by Tim Higgins with the traveling call. And it's 80-53, running ribs. You know, Brent, Jerry Tarkanian got great reputation for his man-to-man -man defense at UNLV. When he was at Long Beach, he played half-court offense and played a lot of zone. Now his clubs can do either. The real aggressive man-to-man, -man, which we saw to start this game, and then the great Amoeba zone defense that he runs later. Five-second call. Bobby Hurley tried to pick it up in the first half. Finally gets one. Billy, you've talked about that three-point shooting. And Duke, 0 of 6 from that range. And the running Rebs are 6 of 10. Well, the three, three of the poorest losses that Vegas had all year, their three-point shooting was down under 24%. That's not the case tonight, obviously. But you can't fault any phase of their game tonight. The towel in place. Not necessary right now. Jerry wanting a little more movement in his club against this man-to-man. -man. Johnson. He is so good inside, putting the ball back up. He comes down on his shots inside when he turns and faces and really squares up to the basket to be in perfect offensive rebounding position. That's why he gets so many of those putbacks. 22 points, eight rebounds for Larry Johnson. Hunt from the side of Henderson could not stop him that time. Oh Pass inside the scurry, and he was fouled. Henderson and Abdelnavi were underneath. Moses is an unusual player on passes like that. He, he does not have good hands sometimes inside, but for some reason he's able to go ahead and get it when it counts. That was Abdul Nabi, who picked up number three. Larry Johnson with that rebound is the season record holder in his first year at UNLV in rebounding. Also in free throws made. He's had quite an impact on that team and deserves his consensus All-American pick. Everything's working. We're looking at a 56% free throw shooter that hit nothing but net. This Rebel defense has forced 19 Duke turnovers here tonight. Henderson still missing from three-point range. And Johnson off with another rebound. Snap pass now to Hunt. Score the triple. 
Greg Anthony looks over here and points and said, automatic. And the record for UNLV with 86 points now and still eight minutes to play in this game. It's 86-57. Late. Oh, he had to finish anything. Christian Leitner has had four or five attempts here in the second half, uncontested, and couldn't finish. Anthony coming around with Hurley chasing him as they bring seconds down off the clock now. Sensing that a national championship is inside at 7:30, 86-57, their tremendous defense has set this up. That pass, Hunt could not save it. Over and back, and it goes to Duke. And again, Mike Shishovsky <laughs> will try a different lineup. The reason Jerry Tarkanian is stopping over there is because he, Moses's job is to stay under the basket. He has no business out there. And Jerry, who likes perfect execution in this semi-delay game, is not going to take it. Billy, I want to talk about Jerry and his program. The NCAA suspended six players earlier for one game for failing to pay hotel incidentals. And what about some of the problems that uh, they have had to overcome with this program? Well, you know, Jerry brought problems to UNLV when he arrived. The problems were at Long Beach State, where that team was put on probation. He was he avoided being penalized himself when he moved to UNLV, and I think the NCAA chased him over there, uh, and rightfully so. Uh, and they've been chasing him, of course, ever since in the courts. He is presently uh, in a situation uh, involving a, a further investigation. And I think that Jerry has turned his program in the right direction. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, in this particular case tonight, he's going to have a national championship. And I think the program is moving in the right direction. Whether he can overcome the previous problems remains to be seen. Larry Johnson, as a matter of fact, is the only player on this team that has played every game this year because of some of those suspensions. Now, Tarkanian was ordered suspended for two years by the NCAA, and that suit went all the way to the Supreme Court. And it was won by the NCAA, and that group can go back on Tarkanian for penalties, but there is a state injunction forbidding that he be suspended for two years. So it doesn't seem likely that the NCAA will seek the maximum, but this is a team that could indeed be facing some penalties down the road because of the recruitment of Lloyd Daniels, who was a high school star out of New York, but who's had a very troubled recent past, and part of it involved Vegas. Nevertheless, this team on the floor, very well coached, and a player like Larry Johnson is just a remarkable young man. And he has provided some character and leadership for this team. And so not all of what you hear and see with the shark is bad. There's certainly not activities in terms of their practice sessions and the way his team performs. Johnson and the putback by Augman. 90 to 59. Fred, the Duke club has been demoralized since that tremendous 19-0 run. And they're going through the motions right now. Now Jerry again showing his ability as a coach saying the object is to win the game not to break records here and that's why you see a much more patient approach to the way they're playing half court great fans in Las Vegas we should point out you can hear the noise in the background they have a lot of them in McNichols here tonight as Sianovich hits the three Story can taste it, folks. Pikes Peak is not too far away from Denver, and the running Rebs are hoping to get to the top. That's the only summit that they have failed to reach in the NCAA tournament, and in this half, they have scored 46 points to Duke's 24. And the chant now is Big West, Big West. As Leitner coming up was fouled and he'll shoot a pair. And that's the conference that the University of Nevada at Las Vegas plays in and normally dominates every year, we should point out. Although there were some other good teams in that conference this year. Very good. UC Santa Barbara, an outstanding ball club. 
New Mexico State, which was one of the finest games I saw all year. The Tark went down there and lost. Long Beach State to Joe Harrington, who has now moved over to this state. He's going to be coaching the University of Colorado. And Stacy Ogman fouls out. He leaves with 12.7 assists and four rebounds, but numbers do not do him justice. The work he does defensively on the floor is magnificent and has been throughout his career. Brent, I, I'm not so sure he's not the most talented all-around player in college basketball. When we were talking about the Big West, he was honorable mention all-conference. <laughs> Who voted for that? <laughs> MVP of the Western region, but honorable mention all-conference. Johnson showing his versatility. A little four-corner situation here. Henderson chasing out on Bice. Now Bice putting it down, loses it. Duke's ball. 23 points is the biggest margin of victory ever in an NCAA championship game. And that was when UCLA beat North Carolina 78-55. Now it's 93-64 with 4.13 to go. Henderson finally buries a three. Paddling inside for that field goal was Jones, and that's his first of the game. And in the start of the year, before Butler and Moses Scurry were eligible, Jones was the starting center on this clock. Quebec shot is blocked by Johnson, and it continues for the run and Reds. Larry Johnson just a man among boys in this game. Before the game, Bice misfiring. And man Johnson gets boys. it back, and now Jones with his second field goal. Before the game, Billy, inside the Vegas locker room, you could tell that the players were focused as they sat there in a group. And then Walter Payton came into the room with his son and spoke to the team for several minutes. Each man listened intently as uh, Sweetness told the running webs how to stay focused in a game like this, but yet be relaxed at the same time. Not think about it as a national championship game, but just one more contest to play as they have all season long. Larry Johnson in the final four has exhibited more of other skills that he has than I saw him do all year long. Dribbling Anthony. to the outside, hitting those three-point jump shots, faking the jumper at the top of the key, driving by. Even Lois watching this action. She Green. used to yell and scream a lot. And now, of course, she has those rosary beads to help get her through. And the, the running reps are beginning their celebration at 2.43 as Duke will head back home after failing to win a national championship. And that's the eighth time that they have come here. Ben, you see Lois uh, up there. It was a great story. She went to Mass the other day, tried to get Jerry to go along, and Jerry was just too busy to go. She gets to Mass, kneels down in the pew, looks over, and there's Mike Krzyzewski, and she said he was praying very hard. Obviously, it didn't work. That lady has been through turmoil during, of course, this NCAA process with her husband. For Jerry on the sidelines, all I can think of is how do you feel when you've got nothing left to prove? And there is the record. 99 points sets a new standard for points in a championship game. 99 to 66. Still 243 to go. It was all of that. Jones gets it into Sianovich's hands. When you look back as Bice double dribbles. And for Mickey Krzyzewski, the coach's wife, this has been a long night, too, watching from the stands here. 99-66. 
Well, Brent, there have been three different coaches at Duke University have taken their squads to the Final Four, and none of them come away with a victory. Vic Bubas did it twice. Bill Foster in 78, losing to Kentucky. And now Mike. Early misfiring. And still doesn't have a field goal since the UCLA game. That's Dave Rice putting one up. Jones can't knock it in. And for people who think that this Vegas team is going to disintegrate, Clark has probably had his finest recruiting here in a long time for next season, with a lot of these players returning. Joe Cook with the field goal. And how about the young men from Ball State who are watching this game? How close they came against the running Rebs. That was a two-point game. And right, Paris McCurdy slipped on the sidelines coming out to what should have been a opportunity to tie or win. Jones missing, and the ball will go to Duke now as both coaches have cleaned the benches. With Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger, and as soon as this Las Vegas championship game is over, we'll be hearing from Coach Jerry Tarkanian and some of the running Rebs, 99-68, to 68, and uh, certainly when we look back to the 80s, that string of remarkable NCAA championship games has come to an end here tonight. Normally, you could always count on this game, as far as a big event was concerned, to turn in the classic close ending. But that has not been the case with this title match. It's been one-handed all the way. One turnover after another by the Duke Blue Devils. Brent, that's a turnover by Clay Buckley, whose father, Jay, played on those first clubs that Vic Bubis brought to the Final Four. And it's the first time in NCAA tournament history that a father-son combination have both made it to the Final Four. Super Bowl this year was a route won by the San Francisco 49ers. Jones puts one in, and now the running Reds are going to wrap this one up in easy fashion. The World Series was one-sided last year, won by the Oakland A's. Inside now to Palmer, and he is fouled by Jones. I guess we'll have to count on Buster Douglas to supply a little excitement and give us a little drama here. Twenty nine points for Hunt against the Blue Devils. Nineteen in the second half. Johnson with twenty two points and eleven rebounds. Anthony thirteen points and six assists. Augman twelve points and seven assists. And then as we saw Jay Billis. Tommy Amaker two assistants at Duke sitting on the sidelines. They know what this feeling is for the fellas. They are now coaching because they experienced it as well against Louisville. Well, the shark isn't taking a bite, as is written on those T-shirts. He swallowed the whole tuna here tonight. Off into Cook's hands. Davis on his left, and they turn it over again. Jones wanted to make a fancy play. Jones hits it. 23 Duke turnovers in this game. 103 to 70. Score it on the goaltending call. Three field goals for Davis in this game and a tough night for that man there. Who will be going into this summer as the coach of the Goodwill team for the United States and then the world championship team as well. So he's got a long, arduous summer to get this out of his system. Now, Las Vegas, get ready. That town won't be jumping tonight, will it? You're about to have your first NCAA championship. Only 10 seconds to go now. 103-72. Tark puts the coat back on. You know, Brent, this will be the first team from the Pacific time zone that has won a final championship since UCLA way back in 1975. Man has built some program. Not without controversy. Well, Brent, you've covered a million sporting events. Have you ever seen one where a team at this level has dominated in every facet of the game? Yeah, the 49ers. Well, yeah, that's that against was the Broncos. Right. That yep. was a clinic down in New Orleans. Yep. Lost it, and coming back is Hurley. But this night belongs to Las Vegas. 
They have won their first ever national championship and in three trips. The Shark comes away a winner in a record-setting night. 103-73 UNLV. Tarkanian and some of the running rebels in just a moment. It's the biggest blowout in the national championship history, surpassing UCLA's 23 point victory against the University of North Carolina, 78 to 55 back in the 60s. And it was a 30 point win at all. Consider the running rebels open the tournament against Arkansas Little Rock with a 30 point win qualified for the final four by beating Loyola by 30 points and then win the championship tonight by that same mark 30 points now the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game Anderson Hunt for UNLV 29 points and Phil Henderson for the Duke Blue Devils with 21 points and right now let's take it back down courtside and join Brent Musburger all right Jimmy thank you so hail to the champions and uh, Jerry Tarkanian, yeah, in your wildest dreams, did you think it was going to be this easy? Well, I never expected anything like this. I told the kids it's going to come down to the last shot of the game. I only hope we make it. Make it. Jerry, I want to ask you one thing. With all your problems that you've had at UNLV, you have stayed with it. Did you ever think about quitting and walking away as a coach? No, I love UNLV. I love what I'm doing. And I'll tell you, this win is, this win is for the kids, but it's mostly it's for the great people in the state of Nevada. The whole state supports us, and I'm just so happy for them. Jerry, Billy Packer's got some of your great players. Well, Brent, I don't think any guy typifies this club any more than this guy right here. Greg Anthony, tremendous ball tonight. Even with the wired up jaw, you've led this ball club for a long, long way. Well, it was a great year, and I'm just proud to be a part of this team, this community, and the university. You know, we've had a lot of hard times this year, but we've all stuck together. You know, we've been a team and a family, and I'm just so proud. I, you know, I don't have any other words. Larry, you had a ball game tonight where it eventually got to be a man among boys. Everybody in your club played well. You showed us some things in the Final Four we haven't seen before. Where does that 23-foot jumper come off the break? That comes from Tim Girk, who's working with me every day after practice shooting it. And it really, really just helped me to develop my game and my jump shot. And the team and the coaches and the fans deserve all the credit for this win today. And Anderson Hunt, you were the Chevy player of the game. I know Jerry over there every time you start the ball game and see you two guys get hot, he says this baby's over, but you got hot early. Yeah, Greg gave me the ball at the right time, and unfortunately my own fault was, shot was falling. Congratulations. Hey, what's up, what's the game? Oh, all right, now let's go. Game five. Yeah, boy, we never won. Very much. Mike Krzyzewski, I know that coming into this, your fourth Final Four, second title game, you felt comfortable that this just might be your year. Well, I think if you don't feel that way, then you'll never have a chance. But uh, uh, our team was overmatched today. Uh, UNLV played a great basketball game. They're more athletic than we are, but they never, they never let down. They never let down. And they play championship caliber ball, and they, they're better than we are, when they, especially when they're playing like that. So I'm proud of my basketball team. I think they had an incredible year but there's no way we're going to beat them tonight. Emotionally, you tried to fire your team up at halftime with the tongue lashing. Do you think your guys were in awe of UNLV at the first half? I think we're, I don't know if it was just UNLV or the whole circumstance, but I think it was their, their defense pushed us out and they took, they, they knocked us back on our heels. At halftime, I thought we collected ourselves pretty good, but then we missed an easy shot and then they never let down. You know, you're hoping at that point that maybe UNLV might let down and we get back in the game. Instead, they were better and uh, they never gave us an opportunity to get back into the ball game. Let me tread lightly, but ask the question, any weight you feel, any additional weight not having won it again? Oh, no, if we would have lost the one-point game tonight, you know, then, then that would be different. Uh, I'm very proud of my team. I, our team uh, gave us a magnificent season, and we lost to the best team in the country playing at their best, and uh, more so should be given credit to just Jerry and his kids. Boy, Johnson and Augman and Anthony were men tonight. I mean, well, their whole team, but... I, Johnson and Augman are two of the best players in the country, and, and they're class kids. I think their program gets a little bit of a bad image, and, 
they have great kids, and those two guys epitomize uh, the class that they have. No one doubts your ability and the success you've had at Duke. Congratulations, Thanks, Mike. James. Thank you. All right, much. let's go back upstairs to Jim Nance. All right, James, another fiendish Final Four for the Blue Devils. Eight times Duke has been to the Final Four without bringing home the crown. UNLV has won its first national championship. It's time for the trophy presentation. And for that, let's join the NCAA's longtime public address announcer at the Final Four, Mr. Frank Fallon. Your attention, please. To present the championship awards tonight, here is the chairman of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee, Mr. Jim Delaney. On behalf Running Rebels, a 30-point blowout, biggest blowout in championship game history. And now for the individual award. Most points, greatest margin. I tell you, this is a night that belonged to the Running Rebels, and that's the way it should be. But as you know, this was my last assignment for CBS. After 22 years with the television network, radio network and the stations and I have had an opportunity to work with some of the greatest directors producers technicians in the world not to mention analysts like my good friend Billy Packer Billy we have shared some great memories well we saw a great champion here tonight it's been an honor for all of us to work with a great champion of broadcasting Billy, thank I you, man. folks I've had the best seat in the house thanks for sharing it I'll see you down the road now let's send you to Jim Nance Brent I just want to add Thanks for tonight. Thanks for everything. We're all going to miss you, and we certainly wish you the best. And as we leave you folks tonight, we'd like to pay tribute to all the talented and dedicated individuals who have helped us make our way along the road to the Final Four. And then, in keeping with our tradition, one final look at a tournament full of shining moments.
One shining moment you 